Several Google employees, at least nine, were arrested Tuesday evening after staging sit-ins at the company's offices in New York and in California to protest the tech giant's work with the Israeli government. The sit-ins, organized by the activist group No Tech for Apartheid, took place at Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian's office in Sunnyvale, California, and the 10th floor commons of Google's New York office, which is right around the corner from Democracy Now! Protesters are calling for Google to withdraw from a $1.2 billion contract to provide cloud computing services to the Israeli government, known as Project Nimbus. Last week, Time magazine reported Google's work on the project involves providing direct services to the Israeli military. The sit-ins were accompanied by outdoor protests at the Google offices here in New York and in Sunnyvale, San Francisco and Seattle, Washington. Workers and outside activists have opposed the contract since it was signed in 2021, but protests have ramped up over the past several months since Israel's latest bombardment of Gaza. No tech for apartheid says Google is enabling and profiting from Israel's use of artificial intelligence to develop a kill list to target Palestinians in Gaza for assassination with little human oversight. The Israeli military is also using Google Photos for facial recognition across Gaza and the West Bank to identify and detain Palestinians en masse. No Tech for Apartheid has published an open letter, co-signed by 18 other groups, that demands Google and Amazon immediately cancel their work on Project Nimbus. The letters gathered more than 94,000 signatures from the general public. For more, we're joined by two of the arrested Google workers. Ray Westrick is with us. She's a Google worker organizer with No Tech for Apartheid campaign. Among the workers who occupied Google Cloud CEO's Thomas Kurian's office in Sunnyvale, California. She's joining us from Sunnyvale. And here in New York, we're joined by Mohammed Khatami, a Google software engineer who was arrested at the sit-in at Google's office in New York. He's joining us, along with Gabriel Schuvener, a former software engineer at Google Research and organizer with the No Tech for Apartheid campaign. And before that, uh, he was with Jewish Diaspora and Tech. We welcome you all to Democracy Now! Um, Mohammed, let's begin with you. Uh, you were uh, just hours ago in the jail in That's the right. local police precinct. Talk about why you were willing to get arrested. Yeah. Um, well, rather than, you know, Consider the demands that we've been raising for you know years now, um, and you know listening to workers and considering the the things that we've been raising. Um, Thomas Kirian and Google execs basically chose to arrest workers for speaking out um, against our the use of our technology to power uh, the first AI power genocide. Um, so we were willing to get arrested for that because at this point we aren't willing to be lied to by our higher ups anymore. We aren't willing to be disrespected by our higher ups anymore. Um, and we wanted to take that to the offices and make sure it was understood by them. Yeah. Uh, how do you sense is the support that you have among other Google workers, uh, uh, the degree of the dissatisfaction with the policies uh, of Google? Yeah. I mean, Google has done a really good job at creating a culture of fear and retaliation um, against workers in general. Um, but what we noticed was beautiful. So many people came up to our sit-in and basically showed support um, and felt that they were inspired by the work that we were doing um, and felt inspired to speak out, which is exactly what we were going for. Um, we want workers to feel like we have the power to cho choose uh, where our technology is going and who we're, we're contributing to. Um, so I, I felt really happy to see that. Yeah. Ray Westrick, you're on the West Coast. Uh, you were arrested in California. Um, talk about this um, Project Nimbus um, and why you were willing to get arrested and what the response. Were you in the offices of the Google Cloud CEO? Yes. Um, we sat in um, at the office of Thomas Kurian, the Google Cloud CEO. Um, to protest Project Nimbus, which is a $1.2 billion contract with the Israeli government and military between Google and Amazon. Um, we also were demanding the protection of our coworkers, um, especially our Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim coworkers, who have been consistently retaliated against, harassed, um, and doxxed for speaking out about Project Nimbus and you know the humanity of Palestinians. 
Um, so we were there in solidarity with them. We were there to protest the contract, um, which um, is being directly sold, providing technology directly to the Israeli military as it um, inflicts a genocide on Palestinians in Gaza. Um, and yeah, that is why we chose to sit in, sit in Thomas Kurian's office. And Ray, could you, was there any response from the CEO or, or his office? And are, are you concerned about losing your job? Why, why did you decide to take this action? Yeah, um, we did not receive any response from the CEO, and I think it's really telling that they would rather um, let us sit there for ten hour, over 10 hours and arrest us um, for peacefully sitting in his office than have leadership engage in our demands at, in any way at all. Um, so we've received no response from the CEO, um, and we were forcibly removed by the police. Um, and I. I, working at Google has been, you know, an honor. I really love my team. I love the work I do, but I can't in good conscience not do anything while Google is a part of this contract, while Google is selling technology to the Israeli military or any military. Um, and so it was a risk I was willing to take, and I think it's a risk a lot of my coworkers are willing to take because a lot of people are really agitated about this and um, have consistently made their um, demands clear and have faced retaliation for it. So um, I chose to sit in knowing the risks out of care for um, the use of our technology, out of care for um, the, the impact of our technology, and care for my coworkers. For our radio audience, I wanted to let people know that Ray is wearing a T-shirt that says Googler Against Genocide with Genocide in the famous uh, multicolor of uh, Google, that it's so well known for. I wanted to bring Gabriel Schubiner into this conversation, a former software engineer at Google Research, an organizer with the NoTech for Apartheid campaign. Um, and ask you, you know, we had you on more than a year ago. This is before Israel's latest attack on Gaza, um, talking about exactly this. Um, and you were um, with the Jewish organization of Google workers at that time, speaking out. Um, talk about the whole history of uh, Project Nimbus yeah. and the resistance against it. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so Project Nimbus was signed in May of 2021. Um, while bombs were being dropped on Gaza, while uh, Palestinians were being evicted from Sheikh Jarrah and beaten at Al-Aqsa Mosque. Um, that was really a point when we found out about Project Nimbus. Um, personally, for me, it was a turning point where I no longer felt able to uh, continue doing my work without engaging and organizing. Um, there was a group of people that felt very similarly, so we um, started a petition. We were connected, got connected with Amazon workers, with community organizations at Jewish Voice for Peace and Empower Change, and spun a campaign out of that. Um, I want to be clear, like the campaign really is driven by worker concerns and worker needs um, around our, the ethical use of our labor, as well as um, the direct workplace concerns of the month, like health and safety concerns um, around working at a company that is facilitating genocide. We've known for a long time that this project was directly targeted at the military. Um, it's been reported in press that um, Google was giving trainings directly to the IOF. We know that Google gave trainings directly to Mossad. We know that the IOF When you was, say IOF, uh, explain sorry, the, the, the term, uh, yes, the, because people are used <laughs> to hearing IDF, Israeli right, Defense yes. Forces. Yeah, it's um, uh, Israeli Occupation Forces, just to indicate, so we're not repeating their um, messaging, that their really aggressive repression of Palestinians is an act of defense. We know that it's an act of occupation, um, so we say IOF. Um, and so we've known for a long time that this project was directly um, targeted at the Israeli military, um, but it was only recently through this last um, contract that Google signed directly with the IOF that we recognize that Google is really doubling down, um, that this contract is directly intended to facilitate 
uh, military use. And we know that Google was chosen over other um, companies because of the advanced AI technology that they are able to offer. So given that we've seen, learned how the IOF is using AI in this war, we really see this uh, as like a really critical campaign for Palestinian liberation. Um, to speak to your point about the resistance against the uh, project, We've been working against this project as workers for uh, since it was signed um, three years ago. We uh, have been doing organizing. We have uh, been doing you know, base building and labor organizing. We've had uh, protests externally and internally. We've had signed petitions. We've done outreach to our executives through internal forums, through chat rooms, through uh, every available means. Um, because I think, you know, understanding like this contract really is, um, like, it really is an incredible issue for um, for our work. Like, all workers labor at Google. So many workers labor is contributing directly to this project because all of the technology at Google is like deeply uh, intertwined with each other. So. Um, yeah, well, so we Gabe, see it's really important. Uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you, the average person who's not a Google worker who might support uh, your your stand uh, and uh, you, who uses Google multiple times a day uh, uh, around the world, what are you calling for them to do? Right. So, I mean, we're calling for uh, everyone around the world to really, like, help us um, with awareness, like, help us make it known that Google is a war profiteer. Um, I think Google is so deeply embedded in people's lives, right, that it's hard to ask for a boycott, but I think we call our, are calling specifically on people in the tech industry to divest, divest from Google and Amazon. Google Cloud Services and Amazon Web Services underlie the vast majority of the internet, but there are other options. So technology workers actually have a lot of power to shift this paradigm and to like remove technology from uh, this deep complicity with the Israeli occupation. Mohammed Khatami, can you talk about your own family background and why you so particularly care right now about what's going on in Gaza? Yeah, yes. Um, so I come from a Muslim family. I was raised Muslim. Um, and uh, it's really hard to, to wake up uh, seeing the images of children slaughtered and know that you're, um, uh, you know, the, the work you're doing is contributing to this. Um, it, it, I've lost sleep. I've. Um, it's it's just been extremely difficult to to focus on work and think that you're working for for something that is contributing to the to the mass slaughter that's taking place um, and for speaking out against that I've literally been called a uh, supporter of terrorism which is something that called by you know by coworkers and 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 HR and 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 people in the company uh, supporter of terrorism which is you know something is it's like a schoolyard insult it's something I haven't heard since middle school um, and that's just an example of the retaliation and and the harassment and the hate hatred that we face just for speaking up against our work being used Are in this way. Are you concerned about losing your job? Absolutely, but um, it, it doesn't—it's it's not even important to me at all compared to working for some something that is, is meaningful and, and having a good impact on, on the planet. I, I don't want to have any association with this genocide, and um, I would hope that Google would change their mind about it as well. And finally, Ray Westrick, where do you see this movement going from here? And can you talk more about the Jewish-Muslim alliance around this, uh, among Google workers and former Google workers? Yeah. Um, I only see this movement growing and continuing to apply pressure. Um, we receive so much support during the sit-in. I've re received so many personal messages from people, um, you know, thanking me for being vocal and asking how they can be more vocal and get more involved. Um, so I think this is absolutely growing. I think Google knows that um, that this will continue, that, you know, workers are very agitated about this and will continue to speak up and apply pressure. And um, I think that's why it was important for them to silence us. But this, this movement is growing and more people are finding out about this and more people are willing to organize and risk um, risk their jobs um, in order to take a stand against complicity and genocide. Well, I want to um, thank— And yeah, I think this has been a really unifying campaign um, for people of all backgrounds. And I know um, specifically a lot of us came together because we were specifically concerned about how um, 
Google has treated and retaliated against our um, Palestinian Arab and Muslim colleagues, um, especially like Mohammed um, mentioned, a lot of them have experienced harassment and doxing for speaking out in like the appropriate channels at Google and have been consistently ignored and harassed and retaliated against. And so we had to come together to say that we can't let this happen anymore. We have to come together in protection of our coworkers and each other and in protection of, you know, the ethical use of our technology to make sure that we're not building technology that's being used for harm. So I think it's been a really unifying campaign that is really grounded in taking care of each other and really grounded in um, making a positive impact and well, I, not facilitating more harm with technology. I want to thank you all for being with us. Ray Westrick and Mohammed Khatami are both Google workers who were arrested yesterday. Ray in the offices of the Google Cloud CEO in Sunnyvale, California, and Mohammed here in New York. Uh, also, Gabriel Schubiner, uh, former software engineer at Google Research and an organizer with the No Tech for Apartheid campaign, before that with Jewish Diaspora in Tech.